everyone and welcome to edu search clinics i am dr gunjan desai and today we are going to continue our discussions on mucinous pancreatic cystic lesions and we are going to focus on ipmn this slide we have already seen it shows you the different types of ipmn in this topic we have already seen the basics this is the sixth part of this series terminology the morphological classification malignant potential and we have seen common cells, how to diagnose them and some of the guidelines related points. So when we talk of IPMN by definition, the definition is when the main pancreatic duct diameter is greater than 5 mm. So that is a very important point to remember. IPMN, the MPD is greater than 5 mm. It is also known as mucinous ductal ectasia, papillary carcinoma or villus adenoma of duct of Wilson. Remember that IPMN is different than all the other cystic lesions because the incidence is equal in males and females. Based on location, it can be a diffuse or a segmental main duct IPMN, which is more common in the head of the pancreas. It can be a branch duct IPMN, which is more common in the uncinate process and then in the head of the pancreas. And lastly, it can be a mixed IPMN that is main duct as well as branch duct IPMN. So remember these are all multiple choice questions very commonly asked very important to remember for practice as well. Now when we talk of types of IPMN you have histopathologic subtypes and you have subtypes based on dysplasia or atypia. So when we talk of the atypia based classification it can be low grade dysplasia, high grade dysplasia or invasive carcinoma that is similar to MCN that we saw in the previous part. However, when we talk of types based on histopathology, the branch duct IPMN is always the gastric subtype okay, and it is less commonly seen to have a transformation into pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. So, the prognosis from a branch duct IPMN is favorable when compared to main duct IPMN. So this is an important point to remember. When we talk of main duct IPMN, it can be of three types, the intestinal type, the pancreatobiliary type and the oncocytic type. The intestinal type of main duct IPMN is the most common type and it leads to colloid pancreatic cancer, whereas the other types lead to pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Remember that the oncocytic tumors are now being classified separately and the histopathological oncocytic type of IPMN is now being given a separate identity. Okay, So it can be oncocytic papillary neoplasms not otherwise specified. It can be IOPN with invasive carcinoma and then you can have a separate low-grade tubulopapillary neoplasm. So these are some of the changes that have happened in the histopathological subtyping of main duct IPMN. Remember that the gastric branch duct IPMN is the most common overall. It leads to the pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma and the main duct IPMN can be pancreatobiliary or intestinal and oncocytic is now considered as a separate entity. So when we discuss the histopathologic subtypes of IPMN, these are some of the important points that you should remember. Clinical presentation of IPN can be asymptomatic in cases of branch duct IPMN or it can lead to recurrent pancreatitis and very common confusing differential diagnosis of IPMN is chronic pancreatitis because even CPS dilated main pancreatic duct and that is where the confusion begins. The branch duct IPMN is the most common IPMN and as we discussed in the previous video also, it has a bunch of grapes appearance because the cysts are oblong in shape. Okay, When it comes to main duct IPMN, there can be a fish mouth appearance of epilon endoscopy and this is seen in only 30% of cases. When we talk of malignancy, invasive component is seen in nearly 40% of cases and multicentric tumors are more common in branch duct IPMN. Where IPMN differs from MCN, the remnant pancreas here is at risk of malignancy because this is more of a field change and you can have synchronous and metachronous malignancies in 30% of cases. 
Extrapancreatic malignancies are also common and they can be colorectal cancer, stomach or pancreatic cancer and liver, lung or breast cancer. So this is something that you need to remember. Now to simplify the treatment guidelines, if it is main duct IPMN or mixed IPMN, then the treatment is surgery. When we come to branch duct IPMN, the treatment is similar to mucinous cystic neoplasm. And the same points apply in the guidelines also up to 2 cm you can observe 2 to 3 cm rejection as per Fukuoka. Up to 3 cm you can observe and more than 3 cm rejection as per the American and the Hong Kong guidelines and 4 cm as a cutoff for European guidelines. We have already seen the high-risk features, the clinical high-risk features of diabetes, obstructive jaundice and pancreatitis attributable to the lesion and biochemical high-risk features are elevated tumor markers. So that is all regarding IPMN. In the next part, we need to understand the algorithmic management options, how when a patient walks in into your clinic, how you manage this patient, how you answer questions in your practical exam and how you practically apply the guidelines. So the next part is going to be very interesting and we will answer a lot of questions there. If you missed our previous videos, you can have a look at our website. Also book recommendations and links are present. So that can also help in your studies. Thank you.